So chapter number 24, the book of Jeremiah. It's a small chapter. It's um, just a simple, small chapter. Uh, but um, it's got a big, big lesson that every child of God uh, do well to take heed. Amen. And, um, every um, institution is going to come under judgment. Whenever any institution comes under judgment, uh, whether it is a nation, whether it is a church, whether it is uh, anything, when that judgment is from God, it does not necessarily mean that everything right there is evil. Um, there are instances there are instances where God was angry um, uh, with the antediluvian world and he destroyed everything but then uh, um, Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord and he found grace because uh, here in chapter number um, 24 we are told of the Lord showed me two baskets of figs. There was one basket with good figs that were edible, that were usable, very good, very appetizing. But there were another basket that the word of God calls naughty. Amen. Amen. So, so naughty is a description of why they are in the basket. Amen. Naughty is a description of why they are corrupted, Amen. why they are evil. Amen. Amen. So that's why he calls them naughty. Then in the, an, another, in the following verses, the subsequent verses, he calls them evil. And then as we progress further, it's very evil. Amen. 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 So that shows us, uh, again, looking at the antediluvian world, um, uh, Genesis uh, chapter number six, uh, before the destruction of the antediluvian world, the Bible tells us that man's heart became evil and they became evil continually which means at first they were evil at first they were good but aligned to evil aligned to evil then they became evil then they became very evil that's when the judgment of god came Amen. so it's um naughtiness naughtiness that makes uh the people of god evil here the Lord uh, talks about them uh, uh, being judged because of the work of their hands. They're being judged because of the work of their hands. They have taken the hands that God has given them uh, and they are using those hands in making things that are displeasing to God. They are taking the uh, ability that God has given them for carpentry to do carpentry and they are using those abilities to do things that are displeasing to God they are using their resources their money the things that they have uh, from the land that God has given them the trees because we know that everything on the face of the earth is the Lord's. Amen. Eh? All the earth, the Bible says, is the Lord's and the goodness thereof. All the earth. Now they are taking the, 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 the land and they are taking um, uh, the produce of the land that God gave them freely. That God had to fight wicked nations. Now, listen here. That God had to fight off wicked nations, remove wicked nations in order to put them there. 
God had to remove wicked nations in order to put them there. God had to let that wicked people die in order for you to be able to buy that house. So after God has fought miraculously and powerfully the hand of God against the people that were occupying the promised land before it was the promised land. God had to remove them and put the, his children, his children, his nation. Yeah. Eh? When we go to the book of Exodus, we see that the reason why God I, I, I said to Pharaoh, let my people go. It was because God wanted them to worship him. Wanted them to sacrifice. It was not only outside of, of, of Egypt in the wilderness, but also in the promised land. God wanted to give them freedom to express themselves before him. Freedom to worship him. Freedom to serve him and to be pleasing to him. Amen. So that God can use them as an example amongst the nations that God was removing. This is the reason why I'm removing you. Amen. Look at how my people are worshipping me. Look at the God of the nation of Israel. Amen. But we see here the nature of mankind. That after God has blessed, after God has lifted, after God has removed their enemies and made them so comfortable, they begin to forget God. Amen. Amen. They begin to do away with God. They begin to do the things that the nations that were removed before them were doing. So why should they be there? Are you understanding the reason why? Are you getting the nature of God? Amen. Are you understanding how God works? Amen. If he removed this because of evil, of the evil that they were committing, and he removes them, and then he places you so that you do the right thing and you start off doing the right thing. Now, when you then turn around in your comfort now, within the blessedness that the Lord has given to you, you begin to do like these ones that were removed were doing. Why then? <laughs> because God, we know God is a fair God. We know God as a righteous God. Mm -hmm. We know God as equitable in judgment. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. Those are the attributes of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So if, if now the children of Israel begin to do like the Edomites, like the Amorites, mm -hmm. like the Amalekites, eh? When they begin to do like all these other nations, the Philistines, the people of Ashdod, of Edom, of Moab, when they begin to behave like uh, the people of Tema and Dedan, the people in the deserts that were worshipping gods that they wanted to worship, why would then God Keep them there. If, if the, the righteousness of God removed these because of the evil in order to install the children of Israel because of their righteousness, if they now remove themselves from righteousness, why would God then retain them there? Can you see why God had prepared uh, Nebuchadnezzar to come and invade. Amen. Can you see why God gave power to the Chaldeans to come and invade? Just as he had given power to the uh, 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 Israelites under Moses and under Joshua. 
He had empowered them to go in and take that land. Now, if they were behaving like the original occupants, why should they be there? This is the reason why God in his judgment said 70 years. Number seven. Eh? 70 years in captivity. Why 70 years? Because 70 years, seven, seven is a number of completion. Man, seven is a number of completion. That's why when Jesus, when Peter was asking, when the disciples were asking, how many times should I forgive my brother? Should I forgive my sister? The number seven came up many times in the answer of Jesus. Forgive them completely. So when God is going to judge, he's going to judge completely. This is why seven is coming here. Amen. So once the 70 years are fulfilled, they have paid the price. God says, I have judged them. Now I can restore them. Now, how is he going to restore? Because there is a good basket. There is a good basket. Amen. Amen. So the ones that were evil, they were going to be judged, they were going to be a spectacle, they were going to die. But the ones that were good, my God, let's read it again. I want to read it again. The ones that were good, the Lord says uh, about the ones that are good. He begins to say, for I will set mine eyes upon them for good. And I will bring them again to this land. And I will build them and not pull them down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them a heart to know me. That I am the Lord. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. What do we learn from here? from this today amen, amen. You, you you may feel the judgment of god you may face the judgment of god but god says i'm doing this for your good i'm doing this for your good hallelujah he says if they're a good basket I'm doing this for their good. Amen. If you are a righteous child of God, tribulation must not make you worse. Tribulation must make you better. Tribulation must make you draw closer to God. Tribulation must make you seek God more. Tribulation must make you repent. God knew that the good basket, if you take them out into another land, if you punish them, they are going to return unto God. They are going to return unto God. They are going to stand for God. They are going to represent God. They are going never to deny him. We see in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were the good basket. My God, someone may say, why would God allow evil to happen to the good people? Is to, is to prove himself to be God. Amen is to prove himself to be God, uh, is to bring the best out of you. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. God wants to bring the best out of you. God wants to bring the best out of you. You will pray like you have never prayed before. You will discover things in the word of God that will bring you to another level. Why? Because you are a good basket. Tribulation must not destroy you, but tribulation must build you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So take heart wherever you are. Take heart whatever you are in. Amen. Take heart. That which is happening is only going to happen until the number seven has been hit. Uh, uh, hallelujah. It's not permanent. It's not going to last forever. It's not going to go on forever. Hallelujah. Amen. When the 70 years were finished, it may not be 70 years for you today because you are living in the days of grace. Maybe it will be seven days. Maybe it will be seven weeks. 
months. Maybe it will be seven months or seven years. I'm sure it's not going to be 70. Hallelujah. We are living in the days of grace. But once the work has been done, God says, and I will return uh, to you, and I will cause you, and I will restore you. Hallelujah. Fear not. Restoration happens quicker than even the destruction. Hallelujah. Restoration happens very quick. One year, God would have restored. Look at a job. Job was a good man. Uh, tribulation came. Tribulation did not destroy him. Tribulation made him better. After tribulation, we see Job restored, restored. It didn't take many years. The restoration happened, and it happened quick. May the Lord restore unto you the things that the palm worm, that the caterpillars, that the canker uh, 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 has eaten. God says, my army that I sent unto you. Just like Nebuchadnezzar may have been thinking that it was him. But God is saying, he is my servant. He is doing my bidding. He is my servant. He's doing my job. The job I sent him to do. Uh, praise the name of God. Praise the name of God. Let Nebuchadnezzar come. This thing is between me and my God. Let the Chaldeans come. This thing was never about them. It was never about them. Because once the Chaldeans have done their job, God is turning around uh, back to them in chapter number 25 and judging them. Once uh, the Philistines uh, have done their job, God is turning against them and judging them. Once Babylonians have done their job, God is turning against them and judging them so this means this thing was about the remnant hallelujah praise the name of God you and you are the remnant take heart in that trouble pray in that trouble seek God in that trouble that lonely place that painful place in that place you don't want to be in the place that you would not wish for anybody, never forget God. Closer to him. Closer to God. Closer to God. Closer to God. Miracles are waiting. Experiences are waiting. Divine experiences are waiting for you. Hallelujah. Experiences are waiting for you. Supernatural things are waiting for you. God will be raising you to another level. Uh, how does it happen that in, in Babylon, the angel is sent from heaven to Babylon? Why was the angel not sent from heaven uh, to Daniel when he was in the land of Israel? When he was in Jerusalem? Why, why were the angels not sent to him? Can you see what tribulation did to him? It brought the men closer to God. Oh men, the angel salutes him. Greatly beloved of God, I have come to give you understanding. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever trouble, financial trouble, whatever trouble, whatever it may be, may it bring you closer to God. Take heart. Never lose hope. Trust in God always. Trust in God perpetually. This thing is about you. This thing is for your good. They are coming, but it's for your good. They think they are destroying you, but it's for your good. They think they are stealing from you, but it's for your good. They think they are taking from you, but it's for your good. They think we have finished with him, but it's for your good. A righteous man falls. How many times? How many times? The number seven again. And after the work has been done. Seven means after the work has been done. Then the Lord will turn around. After the work has been done. Then Jehovah will turn around. And begin to lift. And begin to restore. And begin to make you stand on your own two feet. Today I'm saying you shall stand on your own two feet if you know who the Lord Jehovah is. Today I say you, shall, you are going to stand on your own two feet if you ever never forget God. 
Today I'm saying you shall stand one day on your own two feet and experience restoration and experience renewal and experience re refreshment. Hallelujah. Only, only, only. Daniel was sent into the lion's den because he was praying. Only if you pray. Amen. Daniel, hallelujah, <laughs> received great things from God because he refused to eat what other people were eating. He lived a life for God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All the goodness came because he wanted to stand for God and represent God and never deny the Lord. When they always to pray and seek the face of God. When the king is in trouble, he says, just give me time. Do not destroy. Give me time to go and seek the face of God. And I will come back to you. Just let me go and sleep over it. I will come back to you. Just let me go and sleep. Because when I am connected with God, Something happens when I put my head to the pillow. I always look forward to putting my head on the pillow. I always look forward to putting my head on the pillow. Because something will happen. May you come to that place where you are, you, you are in sync with God. Come to that place where you are in sync with Jehovah. And may God help you. May God lift you. May God restore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right? We are not going to go to spend a lot of time on uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter number uh, 25. But in 25, we are seeing the judgment of the nations. We are seeing God saying, I have, I have a controversy against the nations. Why does he have a controversy against the nations? He, why does he have a controversy? He has a controversy against the nations that were created by him, but that are not serving him. It's the same principle. The same thing that the, judge, the, the nation of Israel is being judged for is the same thing that all these other nations are being judged for. God is not picking on them. Were they created by God? Are they the creation of God? Are they the people of God? Yes, but they have chosen. They have chosen not to please God. They have chosen to deny God. They have rejected God. Hallelujah. Look at these people that are worshipping other gods. They reject God verbally. They reject God in their minds. They reject God by their deeds. They reject God completely. And this is why the anger of God. This is why God is saying, I have a controversy. I have a controversy. I created you. You should be worshipping me. I made you. You should be worshipping me. I put you on my earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth belongs to God. Let Putin know that the earth is the Lord's. Let America know that the earth is the Lord's. Let NATO, let the nations of Europe know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Lord will do whatever he desires. They may think we are going to war. But look here in chapter number 25, who is sending them to war? God is sending them to war. God is touching their spirits. God is driving them there. They may think. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When God wants things done, he will touch a Nebuchadnezzar. This is not about Nebuchadnezzar. This is not the wisdom of Nebuchadnezzar. It is the Lord. The Bible says he drives the hearts of leaders as he desires like rivers in a desert. He maneuvers them. He manipulates them. God is the ruler of all the earth. That's why he has now a controversy against the nations. This is the word of God. So as you study chapter number 25, as you read chapter number 25 with understanding, can you please go again 
Amen. Uh, to chapter number 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51. Amen. You are going to see what God, why God is doing this to these nations. He's going to address them individually. He's going to have time for them. So that in judgment, no one can say we've never been told. God is telling them in chapter number 46, 47, in detail. Amen. 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 If you are experiencing judgment from God, you must know why. If you are going through a difficult spell, surely you must know why. If you are going to be wise, you must know why. And don't do it again. Amen. Mm -hmm. Repent. Mm -hmm. Don't just go through suffering and suffering and suffering and suffering and suffering and your heart is still harder and harder and harder. It means you are the evil basket. Mm -hmm. But when you're a good basket, you know how to repent. When you repent, you have acknowledged and say, God, I acknowledge. Mm hmm. Your righteousness, your equitableness in judgment, your equity in judgment. Mm -hmm. And I acknowledge my shortcomings mm -hmm. and I'm willing to change. Mm -hmm. Help thou me. Mm -hmm. And you will see, you will see, you are going to pass through that uh, challenge quickly, mm -hmm. quickly, Amen. fast. Amen. Amen. Fast and promotion will come again. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. If some things are not working, acknowledge. You see, they came out after 70 years. They came out. Daniel began to pray and say, God, you said it through the prophet Jeremiah. That after 70 years, we're coming out of here. And he began to seek God. And because God is a faithful God, after 70 years, angel comes. And God begins to tell Daniel and tell the Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your 70 years, which are not 70 years, God will shorten them. Because before the Lord a day <laughs> can be like a thousand years. It may not be 70 years with you. But the time must come that the work has been done and you are ready for the next level. Because God loves you. It was his love that was judging you. It's the anger that is judging the evil basket. But it's the love of God that's dealing with the good basket. Because the good basket is for their good. But the evil ones is for their evil. May we be the good basket. I hope today I'm talking to the good basket. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of our God and King, we thank you for this revelation. We thank you for this knowledge. We thank you for this enlightenment. We do not want to, it to end here. We pray for your grace that whatever we may be going through, grant us the grace to go through it. Grant us the grace to go through it. Grant us the grace to go through it. Grant us the grace in the name of Jesus to go through, through it. In the name of Jesus. Grant us the grace that the work may be done speedily. Amen. That this trouble will not remain forever. Amen. My God, in the name of Jesus, that the suffering upon your children will not remain forever. Amen. But that it will come to an end in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. When the work has been done, restore your, your daughter. Restore your son. 
bring them back again to their uh, place. Let them experience the goodness of God through restoration. And may that restoration be speedily in the name of Jesus. Let their sons and their daughters grow to see the goodness of God. Let the neighbors who loved them and said aha to them see the goodness of God. Let their family members that despise them see the goodness of God. For you, Lord, are at work. Righteous, merciful, slow to anger, equitable God. We love you. Do it, Lord. Do it today. Do it for your people. In the name of Jesus, we receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen.